The 340 patients range from violent, mentally disturbed criminals to patients with learning disabilities, abandoned by their families. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're discussing 10 of the worst hospitals in history. So they punished you and put you here? Yes. Do they do this all the time to you, John? Yes. For this video, we're going over some of the most disturbing stories that have ever come to light surrounding medical institutions. Were you aware of any of these hospitals or their reputations? Let us know in the comments. Philadelphia State Hospital at Byberry. Full disclosure, the very nature of this video means we're going to be discussing some very dark and troubling events. Philadelphia State Hospital was infamous for an 80-year history of patient neglect, abuse, and murder. That being said, the mind still boggles at the described conditions within the Philadelphia State Hospital at Byberry. For starters, the psychiatric hospital was very much overcrowded, with one source in 1960 recording that Byberry was housing over 7,000 patients. Furthermore, the state of Pennsylvania's operations at Byberry were rife with mistreatment of these patients, including some illegally housed criminals. Evidence of this mistreatment gained national attention in 1946 when photos of individuals crammed into its sewage-filled hallways made their way into Life magazine. Byberry continually failed state inspections right through the 1980s, before finally shuttering its doors for good in 1990. In April 1988, a lawsuit was filed on behalf of the patients at Byberry. We filed the litigation essentially to make sure that the people who lived in Byberry if they did not need to be hospitalized, were provided alternative community services. Severals Hospital. Severals Hospital near Colchester is one of about 150 psychiatric hospitals in the country. Hospitals that try to meet the needs of the mentally sick, not merely with treatment, but with practical help for living, for living an ordinary life in the community. The early years of Severals Hospital in the UK didn't make any sort of headlines with regards to any patient mistreatment. In fact, there were actually reports of hospital staff engaging in some heroic behavior during a World War II bomb raid, doing their best to reach and treat injured patients. Severals didn't escape its existence without controversy, however, thanks to stories of lobotomy and electroshock therapy performed within its walls. Specifically, these sorts of procedures would often be administered to persons who didn't need them, such as women who were committed to Severals against their will. Severals did manage to come out the other side of this controversy, however, and continued to operate as a hospital until its official closure in 1997. The land's now been sold for an undisclosed sum to a consortium of house-building investors, Taylor Wimpey, Bloor Homes and Bellway. It's thought more than a thousand homes could be built on the site. Topeka State Hospital. The Topeka State Hospital in Kansas also closed in 1997, finishing out an astonishing and infamous existence that first started way back in 1872. Topeka State was infamous for a number of reasons, one of them being persistent accusations of patient abuse and mistreatment. The hospital was also accused of housing at least one patient, a Danish national named John Crabb, who was there by accident, having never been found to be mentally unwell. Forced sterilization was also implemented at Topeka under a controversial Kansas law that was enacted in 1913. Additionally, Employees of Topeka State claimed that the working environment was poor, while a therapist named Stephanie Ulrig was actually murdered by a patient while working there in 1992. Weston State Hospital, also known as the Trans-Allegheny Lunatic Asylum. Weston Hospital, West Virginia's oldest public institution, has been operating for nearly 130 years. Located on a 200-acre hillside, the facility treats patients, or clients as the hospital prefers, over the age of 18. The subject of overcrowding seems to come up again and again when discussing many disgraced mental health facilities. The Weston State Hospital was yet another that was accused of admitting far too many patients than could realistically be treated. This wasn't the only problem on hospital grounds, however, as Weston also became infamous for its lack of basic sanitation. I saw people who were unclothed, uh, saw feces on the floor, uh, saw uh, hoses that are used to squirt people off. Uh, saw 23 people uh, waiting in line to take a, a tub bath and the bath not cleaned. Uh. Patients were often housed in caged cells while awaiting care, and many of those admitted to Weston were there due to substance use issues as opposed to mental health diagnoses. Many at Weston died from this combination of overcrowding and uncleanliness, while the building itself ceased operations as a hospital and today exists as a tourist attraction with a new name, 
the Trans-Allegheny Lunatic Asylum. Trans-Allegheny Lunatic Asylum uh, is a massive, massive old mental health hospital, and it is terrifying. Oddly enough, the entire property is 666 acres. With 13 buildings. Oh. Volterra Psychiatric Hospital, also known as Ospedale Psichiatrico di Volterra. The Basalia Law, aka Law 180, deinstitutionalized the psychiatric hospital system within Italy. This occurred back in 1978 and moved to pivot from such institutions towards more in-person systems of care. The Volterra Psychiatric Hospital, located in the country's Tuscany region, probably would have closed despite Law 180. This was thanks to the hospital's insidious reputation as a place where patients were routinely abused. So this asylum pretty much focused a lot on electroshock therapy. They did tons of stuff to people's nervous systems and try to figure out other things and learn from that. But. Volterra still stands today in ruins, but its ghostly legacy is enshrined in shadows and the memories of those who suffered on its grounds. Lack of sanitation, a prison-like atmosphere, and yes, overcrowding tainted Volterra. Additionally, some housed here were admitted due to their political beliefs, with little to no contact with the outside world. Athens Lunatic Asylum, AKA The Ridges. The area that once housed the so-called Athens Lunatic Asylum now operates as a development area called The Ridges. However, paranormal enthusiasts often flock to the site, thanks to the infamous legacy of its one-time hospital grounds. Now, people who have visited here at night have reported visible sightings of ghosts and strange lights. The institution actually changed names often during its existence and featured at first a communal existence that saw patients performing various labor tasks on grounds. These included such tasks as gardening or taking care of livestock. However, the legacy at Athens has also been tainted due to procedures and treatment commonplace at the time that are now considered cruel and unusual. Hydrotherapy, lobotomy, electroshock, and more were commonplace. Additionally, hospital records contain an astonishing amount of women submitted to care for reasons such as epilepsy, depression, menopause, and, quote, hysteria. There are reportedly over 2,000 people buried on the richest property. Most of the graves on the property are unmarked with only numbers left behind to identify the bodies in the graves below. Danvers State Hospital. The Kirkbride plan is a phrase that comes up often when researching older hospitals. Its namesake, psychiatrist Thomas Kirkbride, designed the plan to promote construction that allowed for as much air and natural light as possible. Unfortunately, these good intentions offer little comfort to those patients that suffered at locations like the Danvers State Hospital. Lobotomies were allegedly commonplace, and Danvers, at its peak use, was severely overcrowded. Today, the legacy of this now demolished institution can be seen with its ties to the Salem Witch Trials and the horror fiction of H.P. Lovecraft, as well as its history of patient mistreatment. Danvers was built on ground once owned by Salem Judge John Hathorne, while Lovecraft allegedly based his iconic Arkham Sanatorium on the hospital. Penhurst State School and Hospital Byberry wasn't the only Pennsylvania hospital to receive a black eye for its tainted legacy. One of the practices that gets some of the most outcry was the idea that they would remove the teeth from residents. Now that's a fact, it happened here. The Penhurst State School and Hospital originally went under a different, more off-putting name, the Eastern Pennsylvania State Institution for the Feeble-Minded and Epileptic. Its mission statement as a place for mental health care was void almost immediately. This was due to Penhurst housing many who weren't there for any medical reasons, such as criminals and orphans. Penhurst's chief physician, Henry Goddard, was quoted as saying, quote, every feeble-minded person is a potential criminal, while hospital staffers were routinely accused of violence towards those in their care. I did something I wasn't supposed to be doing. So they punished you and put you here? Yes. Do they do this all the time to you, John? Yes. Conditions at Penhurst were further exposed on a state and local level in 1968, thanks to a cable news expose by journalist Bill Baldini. We shipped them 25 miles out of town to a state-operated institution and forget them while they decay from neglect. Bethlehem Royal Hospital, also known as Bedlam. Bethlehem Royal Hospital is the oldest facility on this list, with an equally ancient reputation for tragedy. Bethlehem was founded in 1247, with historians placing its shift into a mental health facility somewhere around 1377. 
Health is probably the last word associated with bedlam, thanks to reports that many patients were treated more like chained and shackled prisoners. The patients had come to bedlam hoping that this was the one place in London, in the country, in the world, they could find respite and care, only to discover that their food was taken away from them and sold on, their clothes were taken off their backs. Others at Bethlehem were simply allowed to roam the halls, regardless of their mental or physical state. The hospital was routinely filthy, having originally been built over a sewer. Waste was commonplace at Bethlehem. Many patients died of malnourishment, and still others were made victims of cruel treatment procedures including bloodletting leech therapy. Say we don't have access to leeches, what sort of other equipment would we use to bloodlet? The most common way to bleed somebody, of course, is to just use a knife and we'd cut them. Bethlehem operates today in a much different fashion, but history remembers and marks its troubling legacy. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Federico Mora Hospital Nacional. What goes on inside the walls of the Federico Mora Psychiatric Hospital is a closely guarded secret. Journalists are not allowed. So we've arranged a visit posing as a charity offering help. A BBC article from 2014 exposed the incredibly shocking and horrible conditions behind this hospital in Guatemala City. The 340 patients range from violent, mentally disturbed criminals to patients with learning disabilities, abandoned by their families. The Federico Mora Hospital Nacional was singled out by the article, which included a very frank interview with its director, Romeo Minera. Minera admitted that those housed in Federico Mora were being victimized and assaulted, some while under heavy sedation. The article goes on to comment on the inside as appearing, quote, more like concentration camp prisoners than patients. The patients are described as being barely clothed and often filthy, covered in waste. The campaign group Disability Rights International gained limited access to the hospital in 2012. A patient told the charity's director, Eric Rosenthal, about how she was restrained. We're going to see the restraints hanging from the wall where she was tied. And she revealed an even more disturbing layer of abuse. Federico Mora is also described as a dark, quote, hell on earth with vermin living alongside patients, and sexual abuse a way of life for many unfortunate enough to find themselves within its walls. 